So the first step is to determine how many drops it takes to get one milliliters in the graduated cylinder. So after doing that, we recorded the number of drops from the dropper it took to produce one cubic centimeter, which was equals to one milliliter of water and the amount of water per drop. So that was 20 drops equals one cubic centimeter and one drop was equal to 0 0.05 cubic centimeters. Okay, now start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18 oh. Oh, 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 26 Okay, now start 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, oh. Oh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26. What happened was that we underestimated the cohesiveness of the water molecules as we dropped them onto the quarter. When we dropped the water drops onto the quarter, instead of spreading out, the water drops stuck very closely to each other instead. This meant that it took a lot more drops than we predicted to cover the surface of the quarter. The property of water we believe to be responsible for this was surface tension. Although a water molecule has an overall neutral charge, the actual structure of a water molecule makes it a polar molecule. Because oxygen is more electronegative, the region around oxygen has a partial negative charge, while the region near the two hydrogen atoms have a partial positive charge. As a result, a weak link occurs between the negatively charged oxygen atom of, of one water molecule and the positively charged hydrogen atoms of a neighboring water molecule due to the attractive forces between them. This weak link is called a hydrogen bond and it is, respo and it is responsible for the cohesive property of water which causes the phenomenon called surface tension. Cohesion can be de simply defined as the attraction of water molecules to each other and it occurs because of the hydrogen bond that I previously explained. In a liquid such as water, the cohesive forces between molecules are shared with all neighboring molecules. Since those on the surface have no neighboring molecules above, they exhibit stronger attraction to the molecules in their immediate vicinity on and below the surface. Water molecules are then forced to form stronger bonds with the molecules that they do come in contact with, which causes the forming of a layer of strongly bonded water molecules. Applying the physics idea of net force will lead one to realizing that for a molecule on the surface of a liquid such as water, there will be a net force acting inwards because of the absence of any attractive forces above. This inward F net causes molecules on the surface to contract and resist being stretched or broken. The surface tension is related to the strength of the force forces at work which are relatively weak and the area over which they are exerted. Because the attraction of surface molecules inwards is much stronger than the attraction to air, surface tension is created and the liquid beads up to maintain a minimum surface area. As we drop the water droplets, the properties of water cause it to obey these rules and occupy the least surface area while maintaining a cohesion to each other, preventing spillage over the sides and as a result allowing a lot more drops to fit onto the surface of the quarter. So for this step, we were to repeat 
the process we had just pre previously performed, but instead cover the coin with some hand soap just to see how this affected the amount of drops we could get onto the coin itself. When we repeated the experiment with a soap coating on the coin, we were shocked to see a drastic reduction in the amount of drops that we could fit onto the coin. We immediately thought that this must be due to a reduction in the cohesiveness of water and its surface tension. We believe that the soap had acted as a surfactant, which is any molecule that reduces surface tension. A surfactant is any substance that has a tendency to reduce the surface tension of a liquid it is being dissolved in. Surfactants such as the Dawn hand soap that we use contain a polar head which is hydrophilic and a nonpolar tail which is hydrophobic. The nonpolar tail interrupts the intermolecular attraction that initially resulted in the surface tension. This interruption led to the breaking of surface tension. Water molecules were now able to interact with other water molecules as well as, 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 well as the hydrophilic parts of the surfactant which meant that the water was no longer forced into tight co cohesion which, with each other but could now spread over a large surface area. This is clearly obvious as it took only 10 droplets of water to cover the surface of the penny after adding the, adding the soap instead of the 26 it had initially taken. Okay. Yeah, it's more spread out. If six, if 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 what the hell? Okay, there. We believe that these results could be explained by the adhesive property of water. Adhesion is the property of water that allows it to adhere, stick to, other surfaces. Water's polarity allows it not only to be cohesive, but also adhesive. This polarity of water means that when interacting with certain substances which are also polar, it will experience a force of attraction to these surfaces. If these adhesive forces are strong enough, they may even be able to overcome the cohesiveness of the water molecules and force it out of the spherical formation and force them to cling to the surface of the other material. The shape of a water droplet takes on depends on the relative strength of the adhesive forces in comparison to the cohesive forces. If the adhesive forces between a liquid such as water and a surface and a surface are stronger, it will pull the water down wetting the surface. However, if the cohesive forces of water are str is stronger, they will resist adhesion and instead cause the liquid to retain a spherical shape and bead the surface. In the footage we took, starting with placing the drops on the quarter, we noticed that while the water did not completely bead, it seemed to be more cohesive than adhesive as it was more compacted, which is a sign of cohesiveness. 
This may be because the polarity of the coin's molecules was not great enough to fully spread out the water, but was enough to change the shape of the drops on the coin a bit more into a bit more of a flat shape. When we dropped the water on the glass slide, we immediately noticed that the water was much flatter on the surface than on the coin. This would lead one to assume that the adhesive property of glass must be great enough to oppose the water molecule's cohesiveness and force them to spread out. This is logical because glass is a generally polar molecule, which will allow for an attraction between two due to the dipole-dipole forces present. Lastly, when you poured the water on the wax paper, we immediately noticed that it beaded instead of spreading out, which was an immediate indication that the cohesive forces between the water molecules were greater than the adhesive forces between the surface of the wax paper and the water molecules. Again, this made sense because wax paper is a material that is known to be hydrophobic, nonpolar in other words, which is why after being waxed, Water on a car simply rolls off instead of wetting it. This is also why the water droplet took on the shape it did. Relatively spherical, a relatively spherical shape due to the inwards F net. When we poured more droplets of water, we also noticed that the water would just slide around until it met other water, other, other water particles when it would also join them. The principle of like dissolves like can also be applied here as wax is nonpolar. It cannot be dissolved by polar substance such as water. Step 1. Predict the time it will take for water to creep up a strip of filter paper 2.5 cm wide. Step 2. Trim one end of your filter paper so that it ends in a triangular point. Step 3. Obtain a 25 mL graduated cylinder and using the pen slash pencil attach the squared end of the paper to the pen so that the paper hangs down with just the tip touching the bottom of the graduated cylinder. Step 4. Remove the paper and carefully make a solid dot with the marker at the point shown below. Step 5. Place 5 milliliters of water into the graduated cylinder. Place the paper carefully, but quickly, into the cylinder. Start the timer the moment the paper tip touches the water. S step 6. Note and record the time in a chart that you have created which includes two distinctions, time and distance. The time should go up by increments of five minutes. Step seven, when the water climbs to the top of the paper, stop the timer and remove the paper and carefully lay it on your table to dry. Step eight, explain what has happened. This was the most difficult portion of the lab for us to understand, as it, would not, as it was not immediately clear what exactly was going on. Fortunately, we were able to eventually come up with some answers that we believe fit the questions that we had. We ultimately settled upon capillary action as well as a few other factors as the causes for the things we were observing. As I have previously explained, Cohesive and adhesive forces affect water at its surface because of the partial positive and negative charges it has around specific atoms, which allow for hydrogen bonding. This in turn allows it to experience cohesive forces amongst other water molecules and adhere to other polar molecules. Capillary action occurs when in tight spaces such as in glass, tube, glass tubes, 
water utilizes the cohesive forces between its molecules and the adhesive forces to the surface of, of the glass to draw the water up the tube. Adhesion of water to the walls of a solid material such as paper or glass will cause an upward force on the liquid at the very edges and result in the formation of a meniscus that turns upwards. Capillary action occurs when the adhesive forces to the walls of the vessel, such as paper, is stronger than the cohesive forces between the liquid molecules. Capillary action is used in any situation where water, for example, must be drawn in a confined space, such as in plants through their stems and in our experiment through the filter paper. Capillary action can be defined as a manifestation of surface tension by which the portion of a liquid coming into contact with a solid such as glass or paper is elevated or depressed, depending on the cohesive or adhesive properties of the liquid. Depending on the liquid, the result of contact of a liquid with a solid surface may or may not be capillary attraction. In some cases, such as with mercury, capillary repulsion occurs instead, and a meniscus that faces downwards is formed as the cohesive forces between the mercury is greater than the adhesive forces to the glass. Mercury is nonpolar, so it is unable to have a significant force of attraction to the polar glass. In the case of our experiment, in the case of our experiment, the polar the polar water molecules were attracted to the polar bonds present in the paper, causing the water to climb up the filter paper. The water-based pigments of the markers were also strongly attracted to the water molecules, which led to them rising up the paper as well due to the principle of like dissolves like. The various pigments that made up the marker also moved at different rates because of the varying degrees of attraction to the water molecules, which caused the colorful effect we saw as, the, as, the, as they spread apart from one another. Lastly, it was also important that we had used water-based non-permanent marker because the solubility of the marker would determine whether or not it rose with the water. Since it was water-based, it was soluble and therefore rose, but if it was permanent instead, it would be unable to be dissolved by the water and re instead remain just stationary. We noticed that the water crept up very quickly initially, so much so that after 5 minutes it had reached a distance of 7.5 centimeters, but then after 10 minutes it only went up 0.7 centimeters to a height of 8.2 centimeters, and this trend continued with it only going up by about 1.3 centimeters for the next 10 minutes or so. So we noticed that the, the growth seemed to have plateaued and we were wondering why this happened. Some of the things we thought about was possibly gravity and also the distance the water had to travel to go up further. According to the rules of electronegativity, a difference in the change of electronegativity of 0 to 0 .0, 0 0.4 would make a bond between the molecules nonpolar covalent. Most of water's characteristics are due to the fact that it has a partial positive and negative charge around its hydrogen and oxygen atoms respectively due to its polar covalent stacks, which allow for things like hydrogen bonding, its adhesive pro properties and cohesive properties, and its ability to dissolve various substances and also create surface tension. Assuming water took on the properties of a nonpolar covalent molecule, it would be logical to assume that instead of partially transferring electrons, they would be equally shared, which would affect the shape of the molecule. It would likely become symmetrical, thus making it a nonpolar molecule, and that things like dipole dipole attraction would not exist, and water would lose its quote-unquote magical properties that allow it to facilitate things that we know just like life 
and it will most likely be only able to exist in one form not the three that we know it to um that we know it has um and this may be a gas or a liquid like just just like other non-polar covalent molecules such as carbon dioxide and neon other properties like solubility surface tension melting and boi boiling points may also change Detergents have both polar and nonpolar qualities due to their hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. The nonpolar tails are able to dissolve in the oily grease, which is also nonpolar, while the polar head dissolves in the water. By agitating or scrubbing with this mixture, one prevents the grease from, form from grouping together as the detergent molecules surround these greases with their hydrophilic heads facing outwards. <coughs> The water is now able to easily wash away the previously insoluble grease with the detergent molecules. Lipids and oils, which are usually the dirt that needs to be washed away to be removed, are made soluble by the, by the detergent so that they can be washed away. The benefit of a water strider having a hydrophobic coating on its legs is that it will prevent it from bonding to the water molecules which are attracted to other poles, polar substances. A, false, a force of repulsion like this will allow the strider to stay afloat while it moves its very light weight, which isn't large enough to break the fragile hydrogen bonds. B, um, if it were hydrophilic, the opposite would be the case and the strider would sink regardless of its weight due to the assumed attraction of the legs to the water which would prevent it from being able to stand on top. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants containing chlorophyll utilize the energy provided by the sunlight by sunlight to facilitate a chemical reaction in which they utilize carbon dioxide and water to create <coughs> to create glucose and oxygen as byproducts. The the problems the, f the plant faces is immediately clear because of it, the requirement for water in order to grow. When they are watered or it rains, plants are not able to directly, directly absorb the nutrients they require from all parts of their bodies, like their leaves and twigs. Instead, with the force of gravity pointing towards the center of the earth, the water sinks into the ground through various pores, where it is then able to penetrate the plants through the roots. It now faces the problem of having to transport all the water, the water to all the cells in, in, this, in its structures, many of which are very far away from the ground, while opposing the force of gravity. This is only possible because of capillary action, which I previously explained, and it's dependent on the strength and ratio of the adhesiveness of the water molecules to foreign surfaces and cohesiveness to itself. Capillary action takes advantage of the properties of water and the narrowness of the stem to create a net upward force which allows the water to travel towards the various cells throughout the plant's body.